Egyptian philosophy has as its main premise that one is all, and all is one, in such a way that the principle of uniqueness of the whole encompasses the sum of all its parts as the whole, thus it can be understood that for the ancient Egyptians the sky is man, and man is the sky, and all men together are the sky, and the sky is but one man. In this sense it is about understanding the cosmos as a living cosmos, and as a living entity, therefore, complex and full of diverse interactions, that is, heterogeneous in its essence. In the Egyptian worldview and cosmogony there was no substantial difference between the sacred and the mundane, where every action was considered as the earthly representation of that action in the realm of a divine activity, however banal it might be. In such a way that every action was executed by means of a conscious thought that the executed act itself became divine, which implies that everything earthly was at the same time and at the same time divine. Under this premise, the ancient Egyptians understood that man is a model of the universe, and therefore knowledge of himself also implies knowledge of the universe. They understood that all the sciences also formed a whole, and that equally the specialties, astronomy, medicine, mathematics, art, etc. were parts of that whole as a unity and therefore could not be treated separately. From this perspective it is understandable that art, science and religion were intimately linked. The ancient Egyptians saw the universe as a conscious act of creation of a great god, who was not represented as such, but through his functions or attributes. The hieroglyphic word Netter is translated as God, but it should be understood not as God in himself, but as the cosmic function, that is, the function of God manifested in different ways in a cosmos that is alive. Thus, if man was made in the image of God, then man represented the image of all creation. Thus, the cosmological and cosmogonic ideas of ancient Egypt came to be expressed through myths and symbols as the means of representing concepts of a metaphysical nature. Therefore, the myth becomes an element of communication of knowledge, in an act of dramatization, where tragedy and fortune as opposites converge as parts of a totality as it happens with the cosmic laws. It is for this reason that the myth in ancient Egypt lacks historical value, since it only acquires its profound meaning at the moment in which it is revealed, and it is at that very moment in which it is transformed into scientific and philosophical knowledge. For their part, symbols will function as the ideal means that will allow the representation of reality and the construction of knowledge from that representation. Reality, therefore, is not reality, but the representation of reality. The ancient Egyptians adopted their symbols from the natural world in order to express not the specific act, but the meaning of a specific principle associated with that act. For example, the scene of sowing and harvesting represented in a tomb would be interpreted not as the earthly act of sowing and harvesting, but as a generic act whose message transcends the spiritual in the sense that what is sown is harvested. But what was the concept of the human being for the ancient Egyptians? A first popular myth tells that the human race has its birth from the tears of joy of the creator Adam Are, when he recovered his first children the gods Shu and Tefnut from the waters of chaos, which denotes through this divine act, that the existence of man has a positive character, because the human in its essence is the result of a supreme ecstasy emanating directly from the divinity. Other versions of the myth of the creation contemplate the birth of man as the culminating work of the creator, that with which the whole creation ends, thus after creating other gods, demons and diverse entities, the creator by means of the mud and with the help of the god path, the great demiurge of the city of Memphis, or of the god Knum, the breath of life is granted to the humans. Subsequently, Kemi, Egypt, will be created with animals and plants, and the Nile, so that the new being will live in an orchard. Then, with the intention of containing the forces of chaos, men will be granted kingship and politics, with which the first human organization will emerge with himself at the head, for in ancient Egypt the pharaoh was the god himself incarnate. Humans are not created as gods, nor nature spirits, they are earthly, therefore, they lack the ability to act on the invisible, but it is through their dialogue with the gods that they can come into contact with the invisible, 
which gives them the ability to be intermediaries between the two dimensions, the earthly and the divine. The human being is a project devised by the Creator, but with full autonomy, they are the connectors of the two worlds and as such have their identity and freedom even before the gods, the key is to know how to control their part of dark nature and not be seduced by the forces of chaos and disorder. In Chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead, one of the main answers of the deceased that makes it possible for him to go out to the day is that man as an identity will remain after the phenomenon of death. Death is a change of life for the human and not its definitive end, and therefore it will have a fundamental effect also for man on earth, since a great part of his earthly actions will have a repercussion in his existence in the invisible. The ancient Egyptians were a people who did not segment existence. Life and death were part of the same scenario, one acting as a direct and uninterrupted extension of the other. Death was not simply the death of life, but a continuity, spiritual and body renewed and eternal continuity of life. The Egyptian philosophy of death can be understood by analyzing the individual in two aspects. The a, a mortal higher soul, twin of heart, copy of every human being. It is the plastic force through which the soul interferes in the world of the living. Ka, double substratum of ethereal character of the dead, living and active, basis of posthumous life that plays after death the role of the earthly body during life. The Ka is opposed to the Kaibitai or shadow, the second compound of the posthumous being, which is characterized by the set of elemental desires, passions, vices, defects, which decompose and manifest themselves under the aspect of a ghost. The embalming served to preserve the earthly body to serve as a dwelling place for Ka. All Egyptian life and philosophy was based on the basic concepts described above. Ba and Ka are inseparable twin constituents of the individual in the post-mortem period. The whole physical body was called Kat. All this can be summed up in one main premise for the ancient Egyptians, learn to live and learn to die. Philosophy in Egypt is also moral philosophy. In Egypt, Philosophy is understood as the practical application of a series of doctrines that involve the attainment of purity, which will allow the development of exceptional political, religious, scientific and artistic activity. The Egyptian morality prohibited to blaspheme, to deceive, to steal, to kill treacherously, to excite riots or turbulences and to treat people with cruelty, even if they were slaves. It also forbade drunkenness, laziness, indiscreet curiosity, envy, mistreating others, procuring abortions, speaking ill of the king or parents. The prohibition of these acts considered as evil, was accompanied by several precepts about good deeds, among which stand out those of making to God the due offerings, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked among other good deeds. As a basis and sanction of these moral prescriptions, the Egyptians admitted the immortality of the soul and the divine judgment after death, with the rewards or penalties corresponding to the actions practiced during life, since they affirmed that when the body decomposes or dies, the soul passes successively to other bodies by means of births or incarnations. In this sense, the moral authority of the father in the family is a reflection of the moral authority of the pharaoh in the empire, and the pharaoh, due to his spiritual evolution and knowledge, represents the law or the divine order. The Egyptians considered the marital union to be essential to the basis of society, and what provided human happiness, based on love, understanding, and mutual fidelity. Charity was the way society showed gratitude to the gods. They understood that possessing goods was a divine gift, and that sharing was an expression of gratitude to the gods. From the pharaoh to the humblest of employees, all responded to a moral or sense of justice that could only succeed if each man took responsibility for his actions before his own conscience, before his superiors and before his subordinates. For the Egyptians, justice emanates from God, and among men, it is translated as law and requires an active responsibility on the part of the individual, especially before the sacred. For more history videos visit my channel in the video description.
Next video, Philosophy of Ancient Greece.